Welcome to Be Still My Soul. Today I'm joined by my beautiful sister, Marky Avila. And I'm Pauline Romero. And today we're looking at Psalm 104. But before we get started, we want to invite you, our viewers and listeners, to join us for our opening prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day, for all the blessings you give us, for all the ways you show us you love us. We know that you're around us, Lord, and you have not abandoned us. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And right now, Lord, we ask you to send down the Holy Spirit to be with us, to give us that word or that thought, that reflection that you want us to share today. Oh, Holy Spirit, soul of my soul, we worship and adore you. Enlighten and guide, strengthen and console us. Tell us what we ought to do and command us to do it. We promise to be submissive in everything you permit to happen to us. Only show us what is your will. Amen. Amen. The Unity Prayer May our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. 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 Thank you for joining us for our opening prayer. We now go to Psalm 104. God's boundless care for His creation, a psalm of worship. Praise Yahweh, my soul, clothed in majesty and splendor. O Yahweh, my God, how great you are. You are wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You build your upper room above the waters. You make the clouds your chariot and ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers, and fire and flame your ministers. You set the heart on its funk sorry. You set the earth on its foundations, and never will it be shaken. You covered it with the ocean like a garment, and water spread over the mountains. But at your rebuke the waters flee. At the sound of your thunder they take to flight. Brought to the mountains, they flow down again to settle in the valleys. You set a limit they could not cross, never again to flood the earth. You make springs gush forth in valleys, winding among mountains and hills, giving drink to the beasts of the field, quenching the thirst of wild donkeys. Birds build their nests close by and sing among the branches of trees. You water the mountains from your abode and fill the earth with fruit of your work. You make grass grow for cattle and plants for man to cultivate, that he may bring forth food from the earth, wine to gladden his heart, oil to make his face shine, and bread to make him strong. Yahweh waters his trees to their fill, the cedars of Lebanon which he planted, the birds build their nests. The stork has its home in the pine trees. High mountains are for wild goats. The cliffs a refuge for badgers. You made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun that knows when to set. When you bring the darkness of the night, all the beasts of the forest begin to growl. The young lions roaring for their prey, claiming their food from God. When the sun rises, the beasts steal away, returning to rest in their dens. Man then goes out to his work and toils till evening comes. How varied are your works, Lord. In wisdom you have wrought them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Look at the sea, great and wide. It teems with countless beings. 
Living things, both large and small, here ships ply their course, here Livathan, your creature plays. All of these look to you, to give them food in due time. When you give to them, they gather. When you open your hand, they are all well filled. When you hide your face, they are lost. When you take away their breath, they perish and return to the dust from which they came. When you send forth your breath, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in these works. If God glares at the earth, it trembles. If God touches the mountains, they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. May my theme be pleasing to God. I will rejoice in the Lord. May sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We now invite you to go back and prayerfully read Psalm 104. We will do the same on Be Still My Soul. And when we return, we'll share reflections with you, our viewers and listeners. Welcome back to Be Still My Soul. Marky and I are looking at Psalm 104. Marky, as I read this psalm the first time when we read aloud, and then when we went back to reflect, I just gasped. I just felt like I've lived this this past week. Um, I shared with you earlier that I'm being a tourist in my own country. Um, we had plans to go abroad that didn't work out. And then um, we just we were just playing it day by day, um, what to do. And as I read this psalm, I could actually feel that I've lived this this week, particularly being in so close touch with nature. And it was just amazing as I read this psalm, the imagery, it's so powerful, you know? It says, um, praise Yahweh, that's the first line, my soul, you know? The psalmist is praising God. It says, clothed in majesty and splendor, O Yahweh, my God, how great you are. You are wrapped in light as with a garment. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. You make the clouds of your, ch your chariot. You ride on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messenger and fire and flame your ministers. It goes on and on, but at your rebuke, the waters flee. At the sound of your thunder, they take to flight. Brought to the mountains, they flow down again to settle in the valleys. You set a limit they could not cross, never again to flood the earth. You make springs gush forth in valleys, winding among mountains and hill, giving drink to the beasts of the field, quenching the thirst of the wild donkeys. Birds build their nests close by. And it goes on and on, Mark, it is beautiful imagery. You water the mountain from our abode, from your abode. You fill the earth with the fruit of your work. You make the grass grow for cattle and plants for a man to cultivate. Right? You made the moon to mark the seasons and the sun that knows when to sit. When you bring the darkness of the night, all the beasts of the first begin to prowl. The young lions roaring for their prey, claiming their food for God. When the sun rises, the beasts steal away returning to rest in their den. Man then goes out to work and toils till evening comes. This entire psalm and, and the first half I read was so full of rich imagery describing nature and how God made the earth. And I always say and I continue to say that God really loves Belize. Belize is a little paradise. 
When I stepped off um, the boat and onto the pier in Key Cocker on Wednesday, this guy met us saying, uh, welcome to paradise, but remember, you're not quite in heaven. <laughs> and I thought that was cute because what he's saying is this place is a paradise, but it's not perfect. And as I traveled Tuesday, we, um, we went to Cayo and I went horseback riding and that was quite enjoyable. And then Wednesday, we went to Key Cocker. We took my mom with us and my children. And then yesterday, we crossed the border for a bit, but then we went back to Corozal and spent a good bit of time in Corozal, just enjoying nature, sitting by the sea, looking around. We visited my uncle's um, place where he had lived when he was bank manager and where Carlos first came knocking on his door to visit me. And um, we saw people exercising under a, like a kind of it's like a gazebo mm -hmm. on the seaside we saw people exercising people strolling people just enjoying nature nature a friend stopped by to say hi that you know she's from belize city original from corozal of course but living in belize city stop saw stop by to say hi we chatted quite a bit and it was just beautiful marky so beautiful i felt so blessed and so thankful that the plans to go abroad didn't work out because I always feel that, you know, we need a little holiday. Everybody needs a little holiday. But when things don't quite turn out the way they're supposed to, there's always a blessing in why it turns out the way it does. And for me, it was, it was amazing to be in touch with nature even more this week than I ordinarily would be. Um, just to be reminded of how much God loves us you know, how he has blessed us here in Belize. And some people feel that they have to be going to a foreign country or going to the States or going to Europe or wherever to enjoy life. But those people are trying to make their way here to our country That's because right. they see what we have and they want it. They want to have a piece of this nation. And Earlier this week, I saw somebody make, you know, put a post about how all kinds of people are making business in Key Cocker now. And, you know, my comment was, we got to learn to cherish what we have. We need to stop selling our birthright. And I am not against foreigners, please. But I feel that we have so much right here in our little Belize. And we are not being grateful enough. We are not being thankful enough. I remember when I was working in the media years ago and I visited Hopkins. The chairman of the village council back then told me, Pauline, the village council has a ruling that no one can sell any of their property along the sea mm. to any foreign interests. And I was so glad to hear that this is when I was the producer of these village life shows and I would go from village to village covering the village life but doing a video um, documentary. And I was so amazed when I heard Mr. Um, Gaspar, is, was, he's still alive, so it's his name, when he shared that with me. And now years later, we go to Hopkins every year, at least once a year, sometimes twice. and. Shockingly, most of the prime property has been sold to foreign interests, Marky. <laughs> and I'm, I'm just so amazed yeah. because in countries like Mexico, if you want to get into a business and you're a foreigner, you must have a local counterpart in business with you. And so for me... I think that this past week was so important because I've been feeling that God really loves this nation and he wants to continue to bless us. But we are not appreciative of what we have, Marky, as Belizeans. I don't think we grasp how blessed we are, how much God loves us, how much, and he loves the whole world. 
but how much he has blessed this nation. This is why there's another nation still laying claim upon our nation and don't, don't want to let it go because we're so filled with so much natural resources. You know, as I sat in the boat coming back on Wednesday, I just looked out and I just saw this blue everywhere I turned. And the sea was perfect on Wednesday, Mark. It was such a perfect day. <laughs> I've, I can't remember such a perfect day being on the sea, you know. And I just gasped at the beauty all around me. It was an unbelievable color. I can't even begin to describe it, but Mark may be able to show some of these pictures because I feel that, you know, being in close contact with nature brings us back to home base, to God, to remind us how blessed we are, right? And our national anthem speaks about it, right? From the Sarstoon to the Rio Hon, and just the, the valleys, the mountains that we have. You know, whilst we were horseback riding on Tuesday, they took us to the river. Now, of course, I was a little bit scared because I don't do that often. <laughs> and, you know, I told a guy when he was saying we would have to climb a hill and go back down and how you brace yourself. And I'm like, please don't take us on that high hill. <laughs> and, you know, it was just so enjoyable. Even the, the, tour, the tour guys that took us out, they were such lovely Two young men, they were so lovely, so accommodating, so patient, um, and so careful with us, you know, and two women with our children, and they took us to the river so the horses could take us a, a drink, and right in here it speaks about that, you know, it says um, that, um, it speaks something about the cattle going to, um, you make grass grow for the cattle and plants for the man to cultivate. You know, he speaks about um, what, giving water for the animals, giving drink to the beasts of the field, verse 11. Quenching the thirst of the wild donkeys while we were on horses. Mm -hmm. But that was just such a beautiful experience, Marky. And, you know, so many of us, like I was saying, feel that we cannot enjoy ourselves if we're not going to a foreign land. But mm -hmm. here we are, right in this beautiful nation, with all these natural resources. Beautiful. You can jump in your vehicle or jump on a bus. How many tourists don't we see coming with these huge backpacks on their back and going from village to village, you know? I remember years ago when I had first got married, I had told my husband that I would want us to get to know each village. And I think that comes from being in the past a producer of village life in our country. This country has so much to offer, Marky. We are a people who are really rich in culture, who are really rich in um, nature, mm -hmm. you know? And when you can begin to see these things and enjoy and realize how blessed we are, I think it's when you come in to a place of peace to know that no matter what storm is brewing around you, that you can still have a bit of heaven right here on earth. And I remember clearly what Sister Stephen shared with us back in February when she came to Belize, you know, that you can have heaven right here on earth. You won't have it all day long, and you won't have it all year long, but you can have snippets of it, right? And I can endorse that, I can share that, because I live it, you know? No matter how we are tempted, no matter how we are tested, no matter how we fall, God forgives us, and he gives us that peace, that peace beyond understanding. And you know, Marky, over the past three weeks, I've been getting a lot of um, prayer requests and a lot of concerns about the darkness that's covered our land. There are children who are having bad nightmares when they go to sleep, and then family members are hearing things moving around in their houses. And it seems like there has been an increase in witchcraft in our country, in what is called obia, and things like that. But if you're 
if you're a God-fearing person and you believe in God, Isaiah chapter 49 says, no weapon fashion against me can ever prevail. There will be people who may envy you, may become jealous of you, may become jealous of what they think you have or what they think you are, right? Or they might just not like you and so they wish bad upon you. But if you're a child of the light, there's nothing in this world that can ever affect you and will keep you in darkness. And so I had a particular experience where I took Father David into someone's home and he did such a beautiful ceremony, Mark. We prayed uh, prayers and he went and blessed the entire home. He gave anointing of the sick to the, to the adult and the baby. And you know, right after we left the home, the mother messaged me and said that the child's fever broke. And I'm like, you know, we are children of light. Let's remember that we have our sacramentals, our rosary, our holy water, going to confession, calling upon a priest to come and bless our home, to bring that light back, you know? And as I read this psalm, Marky, I realized how much we are children of the light and <clears throat> how we don't, <clears throat> we don't want to be of darkness. Have you ever experienced sitting in your home or maybe outside and all of a sudden the light goes, there's a blackout. And not only in Belize City, but over the entire nation. Yeah. <clears throat> I remember about two years ago, this guy was coming that's into the dark side music and we started praying. Mm -hmm. And that blackout marquee came from all the way across the border and hit the entire nation. <laughs> I was like, Lord, you're so amazing. You know, and children of light could have appreciated the purpose of that blackout. Mm -hmm. Children of darkness didn't because they wanted their concert to go on. But the children of light appreciated the purpose of that blackout. And, you know, when that, that light goes for an instant, for an instant, say just a second, two seconds, three seconds, how helpless you are. Especially since we might not keep candles and matches so easily yeah. accessible anymore right? How you're really lost. Imagine the world being in that kind of darkness, Marky. How would we be if we're enveloped by that darkness? So we cannot allow that darkness that people are feeling in our nation to envelop us. We got to become children of the light. We got to call back the light into our lives. We need to get back in touch with nature, live within our means, be appreciative of what we have. Be grateful for family. Marky, on each trip, I try to be around family, not, not just my little immediate family of my children. In, on one of the trips, my husband was with us, but on two, he couldn't go. But on one, I made sure my mom was with us, and we went to visit a family member where we were with his family, and we just had such an incredible, happy day. Another trip, I was with a friend with her little girl, and we had an incredibly awesome day of friendship, you know? And then yesterday, my husband was with me, and my oldest isn't because he's away right now, but my mother-in-law was there, and it felt so good, Marky, to go and visit a town that was the start of my love with my husband, you know? And that felt so good. 28 years ago to be able to go back and be a part of that nature, that, that love and that romance that brought us together in the first place, you know, and to see people appreciating what they have. You know, they, there was one man under the gazebo exercising with all the other women, and I liked that. I saw a dad jogging with, or I thought it was a dad, but a man jogging, jogging with his little girl, you know, along the sidewalk, we saw people walking their dogs, young ladies walking past with their dogs. And it was just so beautiful, Mark. It's <laughs> so amazing how much we are blessed in this nation, how much we have. And, you know, you don't even have to spend any money to be able to enjoy nature. Just take a walk along the sea. And we have enough of that right here in Belize. We are surrounded by waters in almost every area. Sit by the river, 
You know, when I, when I first met my husband, Marky, and we were coming back from that causal trip, every stream and river we met, I asked him to stop so that me and my friend could take a stroll through those waters. She was visiting Belize at the time. It was her first time here in Belize. And just those simple little things, Marky, made an impact upon her heart that she has tried to come to Belize every year, but she hasn't come for a very long time, but she brought her family, she brought her best friend, she brought her husband, you know, and it's so amazing how others can see what we have and enjoy it. And sometimes we can appreciate what we have. And so I feel so blessed today, Marky, to be able to say that of the two weeks of vacation that I'm being able to be afforded, although I have to do go back and check in at the office and I'm still doing business on my phone because that never stops, that I'm able to enjoy what this country has to offer, to be a tourist in our own little Belize. And a jewel. Mm -hmm. it's a jewel indeed. We are so blessed in this nation. And so I believe that, you know, God wants us to learn to appreciate what we have, no matter what it is, not to be envious of others, not to be envious of other nations and other countries and want to, to stretch ourselves. Maybe we go and borrow because we need to go take a holiday. No. God wants us to live within our means and say, hey, enjoy what you have right here. It's beautiful, you know. And so, Marky, I um, do know that it's my time to end my sharing. But I want to say to encourage every Belizean to really take a good step back and learn to appreciate what we have. This is a piece of paradise right here mm -hmm. in our beautiful Belize. We'll be right back to hear from Marky on Be Still, My Soul. Welcome back to Be Still, My Soul. Marky and I are looking at Psalm 104. And now Marky will share her personal reflections. Marky? Thank you, Pauline. Um, I like your heading that says, A Boundless Care for His Creation. A Psalms of Worship, a boundless care for his creation. Um, I like that because it's telling us how much we should appreciate, as you said, the beauty of what we have. Mm -hmm. And that can be anyone, anywhere, but just be appreciative of the environment that they're in. And it says a Psalms of worship. So us not just being appreciative, but us also giving thanks and praise to God for mm -hmm. what we have. Some may have little, some may have much. Mm -hmm but to be thankful for what we are given. And um, so it goes on saying here, Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord, my God, you are great indeed. And um, I like the part where it says, uh, When you hide your face, they are lost. When you take away their breath, they perish and return to dust from which they came. When you send forth your breath, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord be glad in these works. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. May my theme be pleasing to God. I will, re I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, my soul. And um, I was reading in the footnotes going through this, and pretty much what this Psalms is talking about is that this is not just a hymn 
of praising God of what he has skillfully created, how beautifully he's created everything, um, but to also praise him through the chaos that happened on earth or in our lives, you know, and be appreciative of all of this that he has created into a world so vibrant with life. Mm -hmm. So we have chaos in this world. We have a beautiful jewel, as we said. Was it just last year that we had the hurricane? The year mm -hmm. we, last year we had the hurricane. Oh, and a year ago. You know, and it wiped out a lot of places. But yet, beauty came out of all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, in this life we have many places where, you know, um, in New Orleans was wiped out, but everything got rebuilt again. Um, and it's the same thing in our lives, in our everyday lives. Chaos happens in our lives that shakes us, but we need to look at the good that comes forth from it. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you might have said, I took the wrong road. But maybe thankfully we took the wrong road because it led you to somewhere you needed to be. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm realizing that this Psalms is really talking about the chaos and how we handle the chaos. How do we behave during the chaos? And in here it also says, it says here that the uh, the psalmist reacts to the beauty of creation with awe. He says, May sin not deface God's works. May sin not deface God's work. And I thought, hmm, okay. You have, I look at it at two ways. May somebody that commits a sin that deface God's work, meaning if we intentionally destroy something, you know, God created water to provide for us, but if we contaminate the water, then we're committing a sin. Mm -hmm. um, and it talks about it here, how we are dependent on God to feed us, to clothe us, to give us everything that we have. But if we commit a sin that takes away from that, if we steal from somebody, if we steal someone's clothes, break into someone's house and take their belonging, if we... You know, God gave us these things, and for somebody to commit that sin and take it away, you know, we should not deface God's work. If mm -hmm. God create, gave something to somebody, we should not take that away. So I look at it, it, at it that way, and then I also look at it at a way where it says, uh, I say, may my reaction to someone's sin not deface God's work. And I thought about that because um, you have many people out there that commit a sin against maybe you personally. And so that's your chaos that you're having right now. So that's my chaos. How am I not to deface God's work? <laughs> How am I not to react? in a manner that will not make God happy. And um, so I start, I, I'm looking at that and I'm pondering upon that because many of us have many things happen to us where we react to something that someone has done and we think that we are entitled to react. Mm -hmm. And maybe we might be justifiable, but are we really justifiable to lash out? <laughs> <laughs> well, sometimes I think I am, but, <laughs> but really I'm not. <laughs> so I started thinking about that. And what is God's purpose and plan when someone does something against you? You know, how am I to make something good come out of that situation? respectful to God. As it says, God creates chaos to maybe bring beauty in something to come. 
Um, so how can I make something beautiful? And then I started thinking, well, maybe it's not me to make that happen. Maybe it's me to be still and know that God is there. Know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God and I will take care of you and I will lead you through this. Through this chaos that you have in this beautiful life you live. Mm -hmm. So, a lot of this Psalms is saying is how we are to be very appreciative for all the things that we have and maybe we should be thankful for maybe the things that we don't have just yet. Be still and know that I am God and I will get there. You will get there. Mm -hmm. I will get you there. Just take your time. Live in the moment. Live with me. Let me take you through it. I will get you there. Um, so, um, I will come back to this again. It says, God does not destroy chaos, but makes it part of the created order. So again, it's for us to be trusting upon his time mm -hmm. and what he can allow us to do if we stay faithful in him and he will be faithful to us. Allow him to live in us and live through us <laughs> so that we can do his work. It says, when you hide your face, they are lost. So, don't allow God's face to hide from you. It's you who hide from God, not God hide from you. Mm -hmm. So if you stay with God, you won't be lost. He will allow you to continue and move through whatever it is anyone is going through. And I can think of many people going through many different situations, many different scenarios, um, whether it be sickness, whether it be um, their children or their husbands or, you know, facing financial difficulties. Think of anything. You know, don't allow God's face to be lost during those moments, mm -hmm. during those times that you need Him most. And to allow whatever to happen, happen. God will allow whatever needs to happen in due time. As long as you stay faithful to Him and do what you need to do on your, side, your end. And He will see you through it. And if it's not to be, then it's not to be. But that is on God's timing, not ours. And it's for us to be submissive to Him and allow Him to guide us through whatever situation we need to be guided through. So, again, I will end off with saying that, Bless the Lord, my soul, my God, you are great indeed. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God while I live. May my theme be pleasing to God. I will rejoice in the Lord. Bless the Lord, my soul. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you for sharing, Marky. We'll be right back with more on Be Still, My Soul. Welcome back to Be Still, My Soul. Marky, wonderful, beautiful sharing. Thank you. You're welcome, Pauline. Pauline, I was thinking the gentleman that said, Welcome to paradise but not quite like heaven. I was thinking if paradise in Belize, our jewel, so beautiful, the water, you know, the mountains, all that we have here, so beautiful, so breathtaking, you could imagine what heaven would be like? How gorgeous that must be? Marky, I, just this week, I um, was on Facebook and saw a posting from a friend and I and I shared it because it touched me so much. It was about this 
lady, I think she lives in the Philippines and um, she's of Indian descent and she uh, had a near-death experience. She was battling stage 4 cancer and she went into a coma and for all intents and purposes she should have died. But instead, she came out of the coma, lived, and she was able to share her story. I forgot the name of the book because she wrote a book. And um, it's one of those kind of stories and books that you really want to get a hold of. But she described what she experienced. And, mm -hmm. and she said, you know, um, heaven is all around us. And, and how, you, how she went in, into a different realm and how we perceive God. You know, God is just love, 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 love. And how she was able to experience that, you know? And why she came back, because she, she could have stayed, but she came back and she became completely healed from the cancer. But that she was a, a person pleaser, she, won, she lived her life in fear. And she got the instinct impression that why she became sick with cancer was because she was living her life in fear and worrying about others, always being anxious, you know? And so I, I don't know, Marky, but I always just feel that this, this cancer is a sickness that comes because of God's divine order not in place. We all have cancer cells, you know? But I just feel that our world is so disrupted right now. Even the, the very nature that we have is being disrupted. You hear about oil spills. You hear about wars that are, um, uh, food being made that, uh, that's affecting the environment. You know, these foam plates that are being manufactured, how they are going to destroy the, the, the eco-atmosphere and I'm not a biologically inclined person but I do know a little bit about the ozone layer depleting and all that and how worrisome that it is. I saw a documentary with with some um, stars and in about the next 30 years what we are enjoying right now we may not have if we don't begin to take care of our natural resources and so for me, this past week was a wake-up call. God gave me a voice. He gave me the ability to speak and to not be afraid. And we do have access to media market. God wants us to promote his divine order. And it doesn't only have to do with our own being. He wants us to be in divine order within our spirit. But he also wants where we live our ecological system to be in divine order. And when God's divine order is not in place, you will have chaos, you know? And so we need to begin to appreciate what we have, but also to take care of it and to ensure that the people who are coming into our, na into our nation to live here and to work here and to um, settle here, and to invest here are doing the right things for our nation. And so we need to be accountable. Every single one of us need to start becoming more vocal when we see things that are not right, when it's not in, in divine order with God's plan, to not be afraid to speak out and speak the truth because the truth will set us free and we will not continue to enjoy what we have if we don't speak out because there are other nations that are already being very much affected by the ozone layer being depleted and other things that are happening in their environment. And we don't want to have to experience that market. We are a very small nation, we're developing, and we don't have the technology to cope with some of these natural disasters that can take place. So we really got to make our politicians become accountable. We need to make our leaders understand that we are in control and we got to bring back divine order into our nation and every single one of us are important in the scheme of things it's not just one person the burden is not just on our prime minister and on the cabinet members it's on every single one of us we all are responsible and accountable and so we need to remember that so important and you spoke about it when you shared about god's divine order mm -hmm. It's important, you know. 
So um, this psalm itself really speaks about God's divine order in terms of nature. But we also need to take a stock of ourselves. Am I in God's divine order? Am I in God's good graces? If God calls me today, am I going to enjoy what we know is heaven? Where is my soul going to go? And that's where my concern is right now, Marky. You know, where would I go if God called me today? And I think that we need to be concerned for that for others too. We got to bring others back into the light. There's too much of a dark cloud over our nation. Every day you turn on the news and it's all just bad stuff. Mm -hmm. But there's so many good things happening in our nation. For the past week, beautiful little children of every social class of life in this nation gathered at Divine Mercy Church to summer camp. develop a personal relationship with Jesus yeah. during their summer camp. And all around our priests are doing such fantastic work marky i was at our feast day celebration at saint ignatius church this past monday man it was so beautiful our bishop said the mass mm -hmm. and father thompson was there our own living miracle our priest who was Everybody thought when Father Thompson left Belize that he wouldn't be coming back because he would die. And he's living proof that with God, all things are possible. Yeah. He's completely healed. He doesn't want to say it. He's, I, you know, but I believe he's a miracle. And I know that others can have that same miracle, Marky. We just got to believe. And God wants us to have that kind of faith to believe. If our faith is just the size of a mustard seed, it's big enough mm -hmm. to spread throughout this land. And so we got to believe and trust God that anything is possible with him. All right? Amen. So if you have nothing else to add right now, Marky. I'm good. <laughs> we're going to say thank you for joining us today on Be Still My Soul. We... Um, want to thank our viewers and our listeners for being with us weekly as we journey. Our journey with Jesus is every day, all day long, whatever we go through in life. And it's the same for everyone, mm -hmm. right? And so we want to thank you for being a part of this journey. We encourage you to try to tune in weekly. And um, the new shows come on every Tuesday at 8 p.m., repeated Wednesdays at 6.30 a.m. and 10 a.m., and Sundays at 1 p.m. So you have enough time to catch a show at least once for the week on Guadalupe Media. We now invite you to join us for our closing prayer. And thank you once again for joining us today. St. Michael, Michael the, the Archangel, Archangel Defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. See you next week.